Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to take a look at ASUS's P8Z77M Pro motherboard. This is another one of the micro ATX boards like the Maximus 4 Gene that we showed you. This is just a step down. This is sort of in their mid-range category. You're still getting a lot of the same features, but it's definitely not at the level of the Republic of Gamers or inside that Maximus line. Okay, let's take a look at the box. You can see it's got a different flavor to it. Uh, you have sort of that dot feature. Uh, you have the infinity band that's going there if you look a little bit closely. But the biggest thing that they're pushing here, which is very similar to the Gene, is that you have your PCIe 3.0 ready. This is the generation three PCIe. Much of that performance is not gonna be available until you have Intel's third generation processor on the market, uh, which should happen fairly soon. But uh, for right now, even though the slots are there and the control circuitry is there, you're still not gonna get the big performance boost until you have the controller that can run those PCIe 3 uh, lanes the way that they're supposed to be run. Looking across the bottom, you see some of the same features that we saw on the Gene. You have the EZ BIOS flashback. This is going to be that USB flash where you just plug in a USB stick. As long as you have power, you're going to be able to flash your BIOS. You have your network eye control, which is based on that Intel LAN controller. Um, you have um, your UEFI BIOS. It's going to be similar to the one that's on the ROG boards, although the color scheme is going to be a little different. You also have that USB turbo mode. This is going to be a true UASP support that's going to allow you to run your USB 3.0 devices at a much higher level than what they call the standard bot mode. And even though you're going to get pretty good speeds at bot mode, it's uh, much better than USB 2.0 and of course it just simply uh, walks away from USB 1.0, you're still not getting the full potential of a USB 3.0 control chipset. Alright, again this is a Z77 board. It will support both Sandy Bridge as well as Intel's third generation uh, processors that are coming out here soon. And you know, we have some other features on here like the Virtu MVP from Lucid that's going to allow you to get that uh, the best of both worlds scenario where if you drop an add-in GPU in, you're also going to still get the parallelism and the good support from the GPU that's built into the, CP, the Sandy Bridge or the third generation processors. All right, up here at the top, you're going to see something that we've talked about. This is ASUS's ninth generation of this. This is the G Digi Plus VRM. And it's uh, greatly expanded to include quite a bit more. You actually have two different ones now that, that combine together to make this just much more efficient. You have controls for the memory, controls for the graphics, and controls for the processor. So that gives you a lot right there at a glance on the front of the box. We'll go ahead and flip the box around here. And we'll take a look and see what we've got on the back. Here you have a small image of the board, kind of a spec sheet that we've got listed over here on the left. You have some of the major features along the bottom. And then you have a little bit more detail about some of these uh, bigger features that we talked about. The USB 3.0 boost, the USB BIOS flashback, the network eye control, uh, Lucid Logic Virtue uh, MVP, and of course the dual intelligent processors with uh, DigiPlus VRM. And we'll get into the performance and how that actually works a little bit later when we cover the, the full uh, performance of the board. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and get everything out of the box and show you what comes inside this and then we'll talk a little bit about the design, some of the component choices as well as the features that are available on this board. All right, so let's take a look at what you get inside the box. Okay, of course you get a manual, you get your driver's disc, it's going to have all your drivers and utilities on it. You have a notice here that mentions that this board actually supports HDMI version 1.4 which has support for high definition 3D. There's also a couple of notices here about the uh, AHCI driver and Windows XP. Hopefully you're not still using Windows XP at this point. Uh, SUSE also threw in two normal SATA 2 cables as well as two of, uh, of their uh, SATA 3.0 cables with the little white tips. You have an SLI slash crossfire bridge. You have your Q connectors which are nice. And you also have an I.O. shield. Now this I.O. shield is going to be a little different than what uh, some of their higher end boards have in that it doesn't have that padding on the back to make it easier to push in place. Alright, so now we've seen what's inside the box. Let's take a look at the actual motherboard itself. Alright, again as we said this is going to be a micro ATX board. One of the differences between this and let's say the Gene is that you're going to have three X16 mechanical slots. They're not going to run at full X16 here. You've actually got the primary slot, the blue one is going to be your generation 3 slot. Then you have what appears to be an X8 slot and another slot here which is also X8 based on the pinout that we see on the back. So if you look, these two are going to be maximum of X8 no matter what you do. And this first one's going to be X16. So you also have an X1 slot right here. But let's go ahead and uh, look, take a look here at the 
at this upper portion of the board where you have your memory support. So looking up here you can see that you do have your four uh, slots of RAM that's going to be good for up to 32 gigabytes of memory. Each slot can support an 8 gigabyte uh, chip. Uh, and you have USB 3.0 here which is right behind your 24 pin power port. You also have your memory go button which is going to allow you to push that so that it will set up the automatic memory profile that will also let you uh, push through different memory profiles. You have a trusted platform module pin out here which is interesting again uh, they're not generally available for you know general sale so we're not sure why that's there. You also have a serial port up at the top then looking along the back you have your CPU fan header your 8 pin power port here and you have a nice stylized sort of heat sink that is going to cover up the majority of your power regulation system but it does leave your chokes and your capacitors here sort of exposed nice thing about that is as long as you're using air cooling these should still say stay, stay pretty cool these are actually alloy chokes they're not the uh, solid ferrite chokes that a lot of people are using they use a special alloy that ASUS has or has developed and they do keep uh, things a little bit cooler than what you're used to and even your solid ferrite chokes so looking here well, uh, we've already covered the bottom of the board. You do have an additional fan header here. Of course, this is an 1155 socket. So it's going to support, as we said, Sandy Bridge, as well as uh, Intel's third generation processor. Down here, you have your Z77 chipset. This is going to be under a little bit smaller heatsink than what we've seen on the Gene and a couple of other boards. Um, it still does have a good surface area, and you have an extension of the fins here along the side which should allow for good cooling on this. Again, so far from what we've seen, the Z77 chipset does run a little bit hotter than what we would like to see in a chipset, so we do have concerns about cooling. Along the board, you can turn on or off your EPU and your TPU. Right here, you have a general power light, your USB port headers. You also have, uh, this is your uh, flashback and your flashback LED, so when you push this, that's uh, actually what's going to flash the BIOS as long as you have power properly formatted USB stick with the BIOS on it you can go ahead and upgrade this BIOS with no memory, no CPU support which is great um, looking at the front here you have your SATA ports and on this board you're actually going to have four SATA 3G it's going to be these here and then two SATA 6G that's going to be SATA 2.0 and SATA 3.0 so they still got you covered pretty much for your SATA expansions one of the reasons is, is at this level of board you're not going to see a whole lot of people that are going to be pushing into the SATA 3 or SSDs. You're probably going to see older drives, maybe running RAID. So you're going to have your boot drive as SATA 3 and then you might have some other drives as RAID for storage. Just This is part of ASUS's decision to make features for their products that actually fit the market they're aimed at. Okay, Looking at the back I.O. we have you have uh, two USB ports. Of course you have a PS2 port for those of you that still have some PS2 devices. You have four USB 3.0 ports. Two of these are going to actually be uh, supported by the Intel uh, Z77 Express chipset. Two are going to be supported by ASUS's AS Media. You have uh, AS Media controller which actually gives you that USB 3.0 boost. You can run it on both but the AS Media controller gives you a little bit more headroom. So you have two eSATA ports. You have an HDMI port. You have optical audio out. You have DVI, VGA. You have a Realtek LAN port on here, which is uh, not, not going to be as good as the Intel network controller that we see on some of the higher end boards, but it's still going to be a fairly acceptable uh, LAN controller. You do still have the Network Eye Control, which is sort of ASUS's software quality of service program, which will allow you to pick and choose certain applications and give them priority through your network. And of course, you also have your audio ports here. You have your six audio ports for your eight channel audio. Talking a little bit more about ASUS's eye control, the network eye control application. This is their, Q their software QoS, which is going to allow you to specify which applications have priority through the network. We're going to take a look a little bit more in detail in that in our write-up of this board, which you can actually get to by clicking on the link right below this video. So that about wraps it up for the general design, some of the component choices, as well as the features of this board. As always, if you like this video, please click on the like button. Be sure to share this with your friends and go ahead and subscribe so you can keep up to date with the news and the reviews that we have for you.